Can a 10 watt laser really handle detail engraving and thick cuts? Let's see how powerful or, well, not so powerful, a 10 watt laser really is. Today we're taking a look at the ACMA P1 10 watt laser, which in my opinion is one of the more budget friendly lasers there for any makers. The assembly of this machine was a dream. It was very straightforward. The instructions were really easy to follow. If I can do it, pretty much anyone can because I know nothing about electronics and metal. Yes, it's all metal. And I work with timber, not this sort of stuff. And I got it done in about 20 minutes. So it's very straightforward and seems to be quite a good unit. But only time will tell when we get testing. Before we run our first test cut, we are going to quickly talk about the features of the machine. I could go over all the bits and pieces, but I'm just going to talk about the stuff that a maker would care about because most makers wouldn't care that there's a little key to turn it on and off. Good addition, but a child is playing with this. You're probably storing it in the wrong spot. But features that you may want to know about is the fact that yes, it is all metal. So all the rails, everything is metal, excursions, really good quality machining. From what I can see, it has a built-in air assist. It doesn't come with the handy hose. I did run that through myself. A little bit fiddly, but just got it out of the way. All seems to fit inside the cable snakes. So I don't actually know what they're technically called. The cable chains. So it's pretty handy. Other things are this handy little kickstand for focusing. Adjustable knob. So everything seems pretty user-friendly. That being said, haven't tried it yet. So we are going to crack into a test cut. Now, when I say test cut, I'm not suggesting you just cut willy-nilly. There is technique with using a laser for the first time and cutting something out. Let me show you. I really need a better seat. I can't really sit here. Okay, let's go squat. This is a test cut file. I, I don't know what you technically call it. But basically, it is a file you should always run when trying a new laser or a new bit of material because it's going to give you all your different speeds, all your different powers, and give you a good indication of what you want to use. So I've got one of these for every laser I've got in every material I use. So when I go to engrave something, I go, how dark do I actually want it? Okay, that is a walnut three millimeter ply. Bang. I work through and go, okay, I want 80% at this speed. So it's really handy to have. I highly suggest you cut one out for every bit of material you're using. And this be your first cut. If you don't have this file, link in the description. Do it every time. Then we cut some cool stuff out. When I can find the cool stuff, I want to show you. Cool stuff. I don't know if you can see that. Let's come in. Cool stuff. We're probably a little bit too close now. Oh, let's get some focus. Turned off manual focus. Auto. Whoop. Cool stuff. So, recently took Jazz, our daughter, Disneyland. So... We need a little Disney-inspired rose from Beauty and the Beast. And it didn't skip a beat, including the really detailed engraving. Let's see if I can get some zoom on, some focus on this. Really detailed engraving on the underside there. Didn't skip a beat. Clean cuts. Lots of intricate detail in there. All in all, fantastic. Let's show you how we made this. Well, first of all, we downloaded the file. Link in the description. Secondly, we added in Jazz's name. File comes blank, so you just got to add in a fancy name. Whatever font you like. Then, powered up our bad boy and cut it out to the settings we discovered on our test file. So, highly recommend you give that a whirl. Once it's done, we painted the middle section in a red. You could paint it any color, but I thought, you know, rose, red. Seemed logical. And then assembled it using a clear glue. Didn't have to be clear at the time need to be clear when it dried. So type on three, of course, dries relatively clear. Assembled it. I cut out a couple of MDF templates so that when I went to assemble it, I could just snap it all together. I knew it was going to be perfectly aligned. Weighed it down with our high-tech vacuum bag, aka a bag of cement. Work treats. And then once it was all assembled, we gave it a clear coat. And all in all, pretty wrapped with how it came out. Not going to lie. Given this was the first thing we cut out on this laser other than that test file, pretty stoked with how that turned out. Now, I'll show you before the little engraving we did on the underside. I got a cool little tip, cool little technique for being able to do that on a part you cut out. What you want to do is take some blue tape and tape down to your honeycomb or your bench and then cut. So you need to invert this because when this cuts out, it's going to be showing the 
top side. So we invert it, trace it out with a cut, peel the center section of the tape out, and then all you'd need to do is line this bad boy up, turn the outline off on your light burn or whatever software you're using, and then you can run that center section and you'll get it perfect every time. It's a quick and easy way to make sure it all lines up. So all in all, so far, so good. I think I'm going to be making a lot more content using this bad boy. So make sure you're subscribed if you want to see stuff like that. If you don't want to see stuff like that, well, don't worry about it. Where's my script? Oh, I need to talk about a thick cut. Mmm, thick cut chips. I mean, thick cut ply. One of the things that we need as makers generally is versatility of machine. There's nothing worse than needing a laser to do your fine engraving and detail work. And then a different laser to cut through thick ply. So this one does both. A little bit slower on the thick ply. So we've got a six mil ply. We're going to give a quick cut through. It gets through it. You just have to tweak your settings and your speeds and make sure you use an air assist for a much better finish. One of the things with the air assist is you can get air assist pumps or you can just plug it into an air compressor with a valve that allows you to limit how much air is going through. Saves you having a second bit of equipment that you don't really need if you've got an air compressor. Quick tip. But... Handled it beautifully. Took me a little bit of to and fro to get it right. On point. Love it. Really, really versatile. Considering this is a 10 watt laser, which is like the small side of the laser scale, and it's relatively budget friendly, pretty stoked. All in all, stoked. Really happy with it. Admittedly, full disclaimer, I did not pay for this unit. But if I didn't pay for it, I'd be pretty happy with it. It's very well built. Was very easy to assemble. Good quality parts, lots of functionality, but most of all, it does what I need it to do. Detail work and thick cuts. Very versatile for what it is. Absolutely love it. Now, I always hate it when I can't find the information I need and I've just got to refer to a YouTube video because there's a whole heap of good information that gets cut out of these videos to keep it quick and engaging. So what I've done is gone ahead and put together a free ebook that basically maps out diode lasers in general. A couple of files in there to get you started. So feel free to jump down below and download that for yourself where you're going to get a whole heap of more information that might be interesting to you. Now, if you want to see more of this laser, check out these videos and subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any value out of this video, make sure you smash that like button. I will catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.